In 2001, we came in as an expeditionary force from the sea into a landlocked country. In 2010, we surged into a insurgent-held area, and starting from a brigade from RC South to a four-brigade corps here that's been very, very successful. Uh, it's something that every Marine should be proud of, and it should go down as part of our legacy. And, and they've distinguished themselves right very well on the modern day battlefields of Afghanistan. Right uh, it hasn't come without a cost. Uh, as we all know, you just have to walk through the headquarters here at RC Southwest, and you can look at the walls, uh, the faces of all the Marines and coalition members that have given the ultimate sacrifice for the success here in southern Afghanistan. I came in here in January, so I was able to see their first offensive uh, uh, combat ops of the winter time. What we've seen since then is a refinement in their communications, in their logistics, and the ability for them to train by themselves without coming to the advisor to ask on a daily basis what do they do next. So we're seeing that they're stepping out and taking charge, and that's what we've always wanted to see from the very beginning. As we prepare to withdraw out of Sangin, the ANSAF, they dominated the battle space. They secured Route 611, and as we retrograded through there, we were unchallenged by the Taliban. The ANSAF have the tactical overmatch uh, against the Taliban. The people of Sangin have an opportunity, and it was an opportunity that they didn't have until the Marines came to town. From this province and, and really the zone, our focus is on making sure that they're able to continue to train, sustain, and project combat power throughout the zone. But they are really secure in their own province here, have grown considerably both professionally, capabilities-wise, and most importantly from the confidence perspective. I think that's been a huge influence of the coalition, but specifically Marine Corps leadership, small unit leadership.